Bring your own bunny attacks with Python and PowerShell, this time on Hack5. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. It's your weekly dose of Technolist, and I'm so excited because today we are improving upon what we did the other week where we changed the Windows wallpaper to a bunny using a long string of PowerShell all kind of compacted together and aliasified so that it would fit in the Windows run line, and it was fantastic. Although, got a lot of comments, including those from the likes of Moore Gordon, who pointed out that, yo, you could have made it that a lot shorter if you had just pulled the rest of the PowerShell from the internet and that's called staging and I guess it made sense because we pulled the bunny photo off the internet anyway so our payload relies on an active internet connection so why not great point here's the thing I think staging has a time and a place and sometimes uh, you know for more complex stuff that's the only way to do it however uh, for something as simple as this, I feel like the more self-contained, the better, and this proves a perfect opportunity to illustrate one example, a little tip that you can use in your own payloads anytime you want to get large amounts of resources and still have the power of curl or wget or on PowerShell using invoke web request because as it turns out, you can bring your own internet, or as I'm liking to say, BYOB, bring your own bunny, JPEG, for this wallpaper prank. It's going to be good. So anyway, today I'm going to share you that quick tip, and I have already got my bunny here in a uh, mode where we can both get access to it over SSH and the storage, and we're going to build a little mock-up payload, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's take a look. So here's our bunny list Windows box, and I can see I have my Bash Bunny connected, but moreover, if I go ahead and SSH into it using PuTTY, because I haven't installed Bash on this Windows box, and log in, I'll see that I have indeed my bunny JPEG right there. And the really simple way to just set up a, a, a quickie web server is just to use Python's uh, built-in tag m simple HTTP server. You specify a port, I'm gonna say 80 for the default. And now that's running. Let's fire up Edge and go to 172.16.64.1, which is the IP address of our bunny. And we indeed get a directory listing, including our b.jpg, which, oh, isn't he so cute, right? So here's the thing. You know, now that we can actually test that we can browse indeed to uh, that IP address and get our b.jpg, I mean, you kind of imagine where this is going. We can go ahead and now specify that same payload as before, but instead of attack mode hid to just do keystroke injection, we'll do attack mode hid and an ethernet. In this case, RNDIS ethernet, because it's a Windows box. You'd also do auto underscore ethernet if you're not sure, or if it's a Linux or Mac box, it's ECM ethernet. Either way, we're now showing up to that computer as both a network device and a keyboard, which allows us a lot of fun. And I mean, I could literally just hard code these values in right now and expect somebody to put b.jpg on the root of their bash bunny, but that's not portable. So I wanna show you now, once we've proof of concepted this, what the kind of methods are, the best practices to get this into a payload that everybody can enjoy that's portable. Uh, so let's just go ahead and mock something up back on our little Windows box here. And I'm gonna go ahead and kill that Python. And essentially it would look something like, well, you know, start out just like anything else with the LED setup so we know what it's doing, right? And then our attack mode, like I said, hid and R and DIS ethernet. And then we would follow that by, uh, we want this to be portable. So we're gonna get a, a few different variables. We're gonna get the host IP. Now, what host IP will return is the IP address of the Bash Bunny itself. Now, that is by default 172.16.64.1, and in like 99.9% .9 of cases, you're probably not going to change it. But for the person that does, this will allow it to work on their Bash Bunny without hard coding variables, which is always a good thing. We're also going to do something similar with the switch position, and the reason for that is I'm developing this payload right now, this test payload, in switch position one. I don't uh, expect that everyone is going to put it in switch position one. They could put it in switch position two, and we don't want to hard code that variable and have it break. So let's go ahead and uh, instead use the get extension, which allows us to say get, and in this, this case, it's going to be quite simply switch underscore position. Okay, and what those are going to do is return variables that are the same name as those, so switch underscore position. And when we use the power of bash, that is going to get replaced with switch 
2 or switch 1 or wherever we are on our bash bunny which is going to allow us to make this portable right so finally uh, for the rest of our payload we'll just have to go ahead and start our web server and the idea is that will ship this payload with the cute little bunny JPEG. So as long as you've got the, the payload.txt file and the bunny JPEG in your switch position folder and you run this, it's all going to work. Uh, change out the bunny for whatever you'd like. Get creative. Um, however, we need to, in Python, actually move to that working direct uh, directory there so that it's in the root, right? So in order to do that, we need to, from the perspective of the bash bunny, cd over to where that is living. And, and that brings up another, so third tip is um, about the actual USB flash partition on the bash bunny. So I, I keep talking about this from the perspective of the bash bunny, the bash bunny is the host. We got the host IP, there's also a target. There's a target IP that is the computer that the bash bunny is connected to. So with that understood, the USB flash partition can only be mounted to one of those two, the target or the host. So if it were mounted to the target, then our boring little Windows box here would see the flash drive and be able to interact with it, right? And then if we wanted the Linux box, the, that is the bash money to be able to interact with it, we would have to mount it on the host side. Um, so in this case, since we were wanting to serve up that JPEG, we need the host or the bash money to be able to have access to that. And we can do that quite simply with using the UDisk utility. So that command right here looks like UDisk, and then you say mount. And there we go. Now it's mounted to slash root slash UDisk. So if I go to slash root slash UDisk and LS, you'll see, haha, there's my payloads folder, right? And if I LS, I'll see switch to. And if I LS, you'll see, huzzah, I have indeed copied already my b.jpg there. So that's what we're going to want in our payload. We're going to want it before it does that Python tech m simple HTTP server 80. Before we do that, we need to cd over there. So again, it's like cd to slash root slash udisk slash, and in this case, we don't know what payload directory it is. So we'll just replace switch to with dollar sign switch underscore position. And there you go, right? Uh, and then, you know, obviously before we cd there, we do what I just did a moment ago, which was udisk mount. So there we go. Now, the USB flash partition is mounted on the bash per, uh perspective. It is, you know, now moved to that working directory and we start our Python web server. We end it with an ampersand so that it's running in the background and not blocking the rest of the script. And the rest of it is uh, pretty much like what we had before, uh, which was, you know, just quacking our little PowerShell. And here's the fun thing about this, because we have the full power of bash, just like before, instead of this invoke web request instead of pulling it from h4k.cc my little fun domain of doom uh, we're actually going to get it from dollar sign host underscore ip which we got up here which is the ip address of the bunny so and we're going to grab slash b.jpg which is living right here and we got there because we mounted the disk we moved to it we knew what switch position we were in we threw up our python server and now this is going to go ahead and grab it and that's it. I mean, you know, from, from here, that dollar sign host underscore IP in our bash actually gets replaced with the IP address of the bash money, that 172.16.64.1. And we don't escape it. You know, it's not like we're actually wanting to tell PowerShell dollar sign host underscore IP. It's not going to know what that is. So we just don't escape by putting a backslash in front of that dollar sign. And Bash interprets that. So it's, it's that's the beauty of the Bash Bunny with keystroke injection is you can have variables in your quack statements. So it's literally using a variable as opposed to literally what you wrote. Yeah which is pretty cool. I mean, you can use the same technique to download large amounts of data from the internet, that is the internet that the Bash Bunny provides, um, you know, without ever traversing the public internet and, uh, you know, notifying the knock, right? And you can do this with PowerShell on Windows or curl or wget on Linux and Mac, um, which is pretty cool. So anyway, wanted to throw those three tips out there. Uh, and in just a moment, we're going to take a look at our Hack5 Gear giveaway, but first a quick word from our sponsor. 
Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think Domain.com. I want to give mad props to Royce Vase and Mikto Rusev, I hope I'm pronouncing your names correctly, who were the first to leave comments and suggest a really awesome PowerShell alias for this while loop that we did at the end of our uh, segment the other week that basically shortened by like a number of characters and I thought this was pretty cool. I had completely forgotten about this one. Check this out. Essentially, what we're doing here is one dot 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 five nine pipe to percentage sign and anything inside of those quarterly brackets is going to run you know however many times so for instance if we wanted to say echo hello five times we would do this and you know i think that it's a, a pretty nifty little time saver and character saver in this case and uh, wanted to point that out because i love the versatility of powershell in that regards this is way better than doing a while loop with a variable and incrementing the variable and checking the value of it and all of those things so i have sent both of you links to redeem your hundred dollar hack five gift certificate prize and if you at home would like to win some techno bucks as it were go ahead and leave a comment below on what is tickling your techno list what kind of creative payloads would you like to see next I know we've been focusing on the Bash Bunny here recently, but we have a whole arsenal to cover. So please leave us your thoughts. You'll find full descriptions to the details in the description below the place where all the content stuff is right in the doobly-doo. There's a link to the contest details. Yeah. All right. Hey, guess what? We're hiring. I know, right? What? That doesn't happen every day. I know. So I'm throwing it out there in the universe. If you happen to be like a awesome tech support person and are interested in a really cool gig at Hack5 that works alongside our product support team as well as our uh, product development team, we're hiring a, a product support specialist over at Hack5. How cool is that? It doesn't happen every day. So I thought I'd throw it out into the universe and see. Um, so yeah, if you've got that tech support experience and you're looking for a cool like part-time gig that has the trajectory for full-time and uh, could really grow with this crew. Uh, it could be a really fun experience. It's telecommuting. It's cool. We could talk about it. Just um, if you're interested, go and check out all the details at hack5.org slash jobs. And with that, I will see you guys on the forums and IRC and the new Discord server. You'll find all the links in the community stuff at the top of hack5.org. Um, and yeah, with that, hope you guys are having a great week. I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your technolust. <laughs>